In this video, I'm not only going to be building an advanced shopping cart using TypeScript and React, but I'm also going to be structuring this project like a real world large scale project. And that means that I'm going to have advanced file structure, folder structure, naming conventions, best practices, and so on that you can pick up on so you can learn so much more than just how to build a shopping cart. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And here is the working version of our final project. You can see we have multiple different pages. The only page that has any content is the store page. But the important thing is if we add things to the cart, we can go to a different page. We can still open up the cart and interact with it. And we can go back to our store and those changes are going to take effect. So the shopping cart is going to work across multiple pages. There's multiple ways to interact. For example, plus minus buttons. You can remove things by clicking this remove button. You can remove things from within the shopping cart and so on. So it's a really fluid system that you can really slot into any project you need. And best of all, in this tutorial, I'm going to be going over a lot of advanced features for building larger scale projects, which you can incorporate into your own project. Now to get started with this project, we're going to be using V to create our React application instead of create React app. And that's just because I think it has better support for things like TypeScript and it just works really well. So to do that, we just need to run npm create and V. And then we just want to put a period here which says create the project in the current folder. Now when I run that, it's going to ask me what I want to call this package. We're just going to call it shopping cart. And then we want to use React and we want to use the TypeScript version of React. So once we do that, we can just run the install method and then we can type npm run dev and that's going to give us just a boilerplate code. And if we look in this source folder, you'll see a lot of this looks really familiar. This is very, very similar to the, the create react app template. It just has a few extra changes to it. But overall, it's almost exactly the same. Now we don't need all of these files so we can get rid of things like the logo that's app CSS. We can get rid of essentially everything inside of here. We can just return. Let's just do an H1 that says hi, there we go. And we can get rid of the favicon, this CSS, this. We uh, don't need that CSS. And we don't need that CSS. So we pretty much got rid of everything but an H1. And if we save all of these files, I would type npm run dev. That's going to run the development version of this for us. And if we go to localhost 3001, you can see that it just says hi right here. And we still have this test version open so we can compare between the two different versions. Now, before we get too much further into this shopping cart, I do want to install some libraries that we're going to be using for this project. So the libraries that we're going to be using is we're going to have React Router for all of our routing. So we're going to say npm i React Router DOM. That's for our routing for our different pages. And also we're going to need to have Bootstrap for our styling. You can use anything you want for styling. I just figured Bootstrap was going to be the easiest. We need Bootstrap and React Bootstrap to make working with it in React a little bit easier. So once we install those, all we need to do is actually implement those into our application. And first, we want to import our CSS for Bootstrap, which we can do right in this file. To do this import, all we need to do is say import Bootstrap. We want to go to the distribution folder and we want to go to the CSS folder and we want to import bootstrap.min.css. And if we save that and run our application, we should hopefully see that over here, the styling for this high actually changes slightly. And there you go, you can see it's a different font now. So that's how we know that our Bootstrap CSS is actually being imported. Now, the next thing that I wanna do is actually implement our folder structure, because this is a folder structure you can probably follow in most applications you work on. The very first folder I wanna create is called Components. And this is where all of our components are gonna go, things like our shopping cart, our shopping cart items, and so on. The next folder that we want to create here is going to be for our pages. And if we come over here, you know, we have a home page, a store page, an about page. This is for representing those different pages, those high level routes in our application. Next, we're going to have a folder that's going to just be for data. This is a folder that's going to contain any like JSON data we need. For example, our store items are all JSON data by default. So we can just put our store data in that data folder. Also, we're going to want to have a folder here for different context. In your application, you almost always have different React context or Redux context that you're going to be working with. In our case, our entire shopping cart is going to fit inside of a context that we're going to put inside this folder. Another folder I like to have is called a hooks folder. This is for all your custom hooks, such as use local storage, which is a hook we're going to be using in this project to make sure that if we add something to our cart and refresh our page, it's going to stay in our cart. Another thing that we want to be able to implement in this project is going to be a folder for utilities. So if we have different utility functions that do small things like formatting our currency that we want to do all over the place, we can put that in this utilities folder. Now that right there is like the most basic of all folder structures that you can think of. You can obviously add and remove folders as you need, but for our project, this is going to work perfectly. Now the very first thing I want to work on in our project is going to be our routing. So to do routing inside of React Router, we first need to import our router, which is a browser router. And that comes from React Router DOM, just like that. 
and this browser router just needs to wrap our entire application. So we're just gonna wrap our application like this, and now our entire application is inside of this router. Now to use this router, we're gonna go into our apptxx, and this file essentially is going to contain all of our routes and all of our generic code that goes outside of all of our routes. For example, our about page, our home page, our store page, those are all of our routes. But this nav bar right here is included in all of our routes, so it's gonna be put inside of our app as well. So inside of here, what we wanna do is we wanna import all of our stuff for routing and all of our different components. So we can go up to the top here. What I wanna do is I wanna import routes and route, and these are gonna be the different components we're gonna use for our routing that comes from React Router DOM. And then also I wanna import here the container component, and that's coming from React Bootstrap. So we can just wrap our entire thing inside of a container like this. So now if we save, we go back over here and we just wait for this to load up for a second. Give it a refresh maybe. There we go, you can see that now we're inside of a container and as we expand our screen, you can see that it's kind of staying centered like that, which is exactly what we want, so it looks really good. Make that a little bit smaller. Now we can actually work on our router, which is gonna be pretty straightforward. All we need to do is say that we're going to have a bunch of routes. Inside of this, we wanna have individual route components and these all have a path which indicates where on the page we are. So for example, our home page is just going to be the slash route. And then we have an element and this element corresponds to the actual component we wanna render. So we're gonna have a home component and then we're gonna have a bunch of other routes for our different components. For example, we're gonna have a store and we're gonna have an about page. And this one is going to be at slash store. And this one is at slash about. Really straightforward. All we need to do is create these three components themselves so we can render them on our page. So let's do that inside of this pages component here. We can create a home.tsx. And inside of here, we're just gonna export a function called home. And all this is going to do is return to us, let's just say maybe an h1 that says home. Super straightforward, that's all that this component does. And now we can import that component here. If we just do that, we can import home from pages, and now we have that home page. Now you will notice I'm doing export function instead of export default function. I find that when you're working on larger projects, having all your exports be named is a little bit easier to keep track of everything, so that's why I'm doing that. Let's copy this file a couple times. We're gonna have our store, and we're also going to have our about. I just wanna change these to about and the store one is going to say store. So now we have our three different pages. If we save our application and make sure we import these, just like this, and we give it a save, you can see it now says home. If we go to slash store, you can see it says store. And if we go to slash about, if I can spell properly, you can see that we're on the about page. Now the final thing that I wanna do inside of our container is I wanna add a little bit of margin on the bottom. So we're gonna say class name here is MB4. And that's just going to add some margin to the bottom of our container. So if it's really long, it doesn't touch the edge of the screen. It has a little bit of spacing. Now, the reason I'm not adding any margin to the top is because the next thing we wanna do is create our own nav bar. And Bootstrap has like some nav bar classes we can use, but instead of doing that inside of our app, I wanna create our own component for our nav bar. So inside of here, I'm gonna create a new file called navbar.tsx. And this is gonna be explicitly for our nav bar component. Then inside of our app, I wanna import that component. So we're gonna say import nav bar. This is gonna be coming from that file, which is dot slash components slash nav bar. There we go. And then we can just render that nav bar. Whoops, nav bar, just like that. And we need to put that inside of a fragment so we can render everything to the screen. There we go. Now we obviously just need to make this nav bar actually work. So we can say export function nav bar. And for now, if we just return an h1 that says nav, and we save, you can see our nav is showing up. Now to create a nav bar using Bootstrap is really easy. We have a component called nav bar that we can actually use, but we first need to import this component. And since it has the same name as our nav bar component, we need to rename it to something else. So I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. We're importing this from React Bootstrap, and we want to import a component called nav bar. But of course, these two things have the same name, so that's a problem. So we're gonna import this with the name of navbar bs, just so we know this is our bootstrap navbar. And now we can use this navbar down here. So we have that bootstrap navbar, which inside of it, we're going to contain all of our information. So first I'm gonna put everything inside of a container so we have the same kind of sizing information that we have for the rest of our application. So if I just put the text nav in there for now, you can see that this nav is in the same container as like our about page. But on our navbar, I wanna give it a background and a shadow. So we can say here, we're gonna go class name, background white, and we're gonna say shadow small 
and let's give it a little bit of margin on the bottom. And now you can see it's giving it a little bit of a shadow. If I make this shadow like large, for example, you can see a very large shadow. I think small looks the best. Now, one thing that you'll notice is our nav bar is white and our page is white. That makes it a little bit hard to see what the difference between the two is. So inside of our index HTML on the body, I wanna come in here and add a class of background light. And that's just gonna give us a slightly off white background color. And we're gonna just have to refresh our page for that to see through. But you can see we have this slightly different white color down here than we have up at the top. It's just slightly grayer. So that gives us a little bit of contrast, which is gonna look really good when we start getting our cards showing up on the page as well. So now inside of our nav, we need to create essentially all of our different links as well as the shopping cart button. You can see we have our links on the left, shopping cart button on the right. Pretty straightforward to do. So inside of here, we're gonna use a component called nav, which comes from that bootstrap library up here. And inside this nav component, we're just gonna put links. So we can say nav.link. And this nav.link, we're going to make it act like it's a nav link from React Router. Now in order to do that, we just need to use the as tag here. So we can say as, and then we just need to say what we want it to act like, and we want it to act like that nav link. So this is called nav link, and this comes from React Router DOM, just like that. Now all we need to do is give it a two property, which is a property of nav link, that'll tell it where we want to actually send this link to. In our case, this is gonna be our home link, so we're just gonna use the slash path right here for our home. We can close this off, and then we can type in home. And if I save this real quick, you'll now see we have a home link up here. And when I click on that, it brings us to the home page. Now we just need to copy this down to do this two other times for both of our other links. So we can say here that we have a store link and we have an about link. And we want this to go to the store page and we want this to go to the about page. Now, if I give this a save, you can see we have our home, our store and our about page and we can navigate between all of them. The next thing we need to do with our nav bar is we need to add a section on the right hand side for our shopping cart button. To do this, I'm just gonna emulate that by putting the text high right here. And then to make sure that this high text is always pushed to the right hand side, no matter what, on our nav, I'm gonna come in here with a class name. I'm just gonna say this is gonna be ME Auto. And that's just gonna put margin on the right hand side of our nav bar so that it fills the entire space and pushes whatever we have on the right all the way to the right side. Now, instead of just rendering the text high, we're gonna render a button straight from React Bootstrap. We're gonna import that up there. And inside this button, what I wanna do is I wanna put an SVG. Now you can go online and find any SVG you want for the shopping cart. I'm just gonna copy and paste an SVG that I found by just searching for an SVG for a shopping cart. And if I save, you're gonna notice nothing shows up right away because I haven't given it any size. But as soon as we give it a width and a height, it's actually going to show up on the page. And again, you can find any SVG you want. It really doesn't matter. Or if you want, you can go to the GitHub linked in the description and copy this exact SVG if you wanna use the same one for your project. So what we need to do is add some styles and we wanna change the width, which we're gonna say is three REM, and we're gonna change the height, which we're also gonna say is three REM. Just doing that alone, you can now see that we have our shopping cart icon showing up inside of our button. Now, I wanna change our button quite a bit to make it look a little bit better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the variant here, and it's gonna be outline primary, and it's just going to give us an outline instead of the actual solid version. And I wanna add some classes here, and I wanna make it rounded, so we're gonna say rounded, circle that's going to make the button a circle shape which i like and then eventually we want to add an on click into this but for now we don't want to worry about that the only other thing i want to worry about is having the indicator right here telling me how many items are in my cart as i add more and more items to the cart this number is going to change and i want to have an indicator for that so to do that we're just going to need to put essentially a red circle inside of our button and to position that we're going to use absolute positioning so we need to make our button itself a relative position to make styling and rendering out the button in there the red circle i'm sorry inside of our button in the right location so now i'm just going to collapse down this svg because afterwards i'm just going to have a div and this div all it's going to do is have a number for example three inside of it for how many items are in our shopping cart and then we're going to have a bunch of classes and styles applied to this so I wanna make this a circle as well. So we're gonna say rounded circle. I wanna make it a red background. So we're gonna give it background danger. And I wanna center everything. So we're gonna use Flexbox for that. We can say justify content center and align item center. And that's going to center that for us at least. Now all we need to do is position this red circle as far to the right as we can, essentially in that bottom right hand corner. So inside of our style, let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna change our color here to white. That's just gonna be so our text is white. We're gonna change our width here to 1.5 REM, essentially half the size of our overall button. Same thing for our height, 1.5 REM, just like that. Then what I wanna do is I wanna use position absolute, and that's allowing us to give it a bottom and a right position. So we're gonna say bottom is zero, right is zero. 
And if we just save this alone, it's not gonna be quite in the right location because our bottom right of our circle is in the bottom right of this circle. We wanna offset it a little bit. So we can just do a transform, whoops, transform in the translate. And we're just gonna say negative 25% in both directions. And that is going to just put it in the right location. I'm sorry, positive 25% in both directions. And as you can see, that puts it in the bottom right head corner, pretty much exactly where we want. You can tweak these numbers if you want it in a slightly different position. Now, obviously, we want these numbers to be dynamic, but we're going to cover that in a little bit. The only last thing I want to do style-wise is I want to make my nav bar sticky. So I want to say sticky top, and that's just going to make it so it sticks to the top of the page. So when we scroll, our nav bar is always going to be visible. Now, the next thing I want to work on is on our store. I want to actually render out all these different store items. I'm not going to worry about the functionality. We just want to get the styling in place first, and then we can add the functionality in on top. It makes it a lot easier to work this way, in my opinion. So in order to do that, let's just close out of all the files we currently have open, come over here, and you're gonna see that we have our store page. We can go to our store page, and here we can actually render out all of this information. Now to get this information, it's going to be coming from a JSON file. So I'm actually just gonna copy over all the JSON I'm using. We can just come in here, create a new file called items.json, and I'll just show you what's inside of here. Essentially, we just have four different items. They all have an ID, they have a name, they have a price, and then they have an image URL. So we also need to bring in all of those images. Now these images are going to go inside of a public folder so that we can access them. So we're going to create a public folder, and this public folder must be on the outside of your application, outside of the source folder. And inside of here, we're going to create another folder called images, and in this images folder, I'm going to put all of our images, which I'm just going to copy all of them over. So that, there we go, we have a banana image, we have our book image, a car image, and a computer image. Pretty straightforward stuff. Now that's how our JSON file is laid out. It just has the pricing, ID, name, and image URL. And we're gonna take that information and create these cards with that information. So let's go back into this store page here. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna import all of those items. So we can just say import store items from, and we wanna go to, whoops, dot dot slash data slash items dot JSON. Now that right there is going to give us all of our store items. That's perfect. Now the next thing that we need to do is actually render them to our page. So we're gonna keep our title here of store. I'm just gonna come in here with some fragments. And then below that, I wanna create a row. And inside this row, we're gonna have a column and we're gonna have one column for each one of the items inside of our store items. So let's just import row and import column so we can actually use these. And let's we'll give it a quick save here, there we go. Now inside of here, we want to do essentially a for loop over our store items. So we can say store items.map for each one of our items. What I want to do is I want to render out a component, and this component is going to be inside of a column. So we're going to bring our column up to here, and then inside of this column, we want to render something out. For now, I'm just going to say json.stringify our item. There we go. And now that's essentially all we need to do for that. And if we just give this a quick save and we go over to our store page, you can see each one of our items is being rendered out inside of the row. That's really good. Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna change our row because we want this to be like a grid. So as you can see, as I expand my page, we get more and more items shown on our page at a time, depending on how large or small our screen is. Now we can do that really easily by saying at the medium screen size, for example, we want to have two columns. At the extra small screen size, we wanna have one column. And at the large screen size, we wanna have three columns. That right there is going to give us this column layout. Also, I wanna add a single class name of G3, and that's just going to give us a gap of three. So it's just gonna give us space on the vertical and horizontal direction between each one of the elements in our rows. Now, if we look over here, you can see we have space. And as I expand my screen, we're gonna get more items on a row. Obviously, it looks terrible right now. They're all overlapping, but as soon as we make these into cards, they're gonna perfectly expand and fill the space that we want. So let me just bring that back down to a normal size. So instead of just rendering out this JSON version right here, we essentially want to render out a component, which we're going to call store item. And this store item is just going to take in as a prop all of the different item properties, name, ID, price, image URL, and so on. Also for our column, we want to give it a key, and this key is going to be item.id, just like that. So now if we just close this off and we save, you'll see nothing's quite working. That's just because we don't have this store item component yet. So inside of our components folder, let's create a store item.tsx. Now this right here is probably gonna be one of the more confusing components in our entire stack, but the actual HTML CSS isn't too bad to do. So let's export a function called store item, and this is going to take in an ID, a name, a price, and an image URL, just like that. And then inside of our store, we can make sure we import that store item. So let me just save that, come over here, and we're gonna do a quick import of that. 
just like that. There we go. And now if we go back into our store item here, we need to actually give this a type because we're using TypeScript. So we can just say that our type for this is going to be store item props. I generally like to just call my prop type whatever my component name is with props at the end of it. And this right here is going to be an ID, which is a number in our case. We're going to have a name, which is a string. We're going to have a price, which is a number. And we're going to have an image URL, which is a string. So now if we save and we go over to our store, hopefully, as you can see, the error went away. That was right here. So now we no longer have those errors. And inside of here, if we just specify this as a store, whoops, store item props, you'll see that all the errors in this file also go away. So to create these cards that you can see over here, we're going to be using the bootstrap card. So we can just come in here. We can say we want to return a card from React Bootstrap. And inside this card, we want to do card.image. This is going to give us the image at the top that we care about. And we want to say that it's going to be on the top. So variant is top. We're going to say our source is our image URL. And then also we want to give it a specified height because all of our images have a different size. Some are 100 pixels tall, some maybe 1,000 pixels tall. We want them all to be the same size. So we're going to come in here with some height. We're going to say our height is 200 pixels. And then finally, the last thing we want to do is also make sure our images are centered. So we can do that by saying object fit is center. I'm sorry, cover. And that's just going to make sure our image isn't stretched really weird. It's just going to have essentially the right aspect ratio for us. So if we close off this card image and we save, come over to our app, you can see now we have four cards and each one just has an image. They're all the exact same size and they all are having the correct aspect ratio. If I remove this, you can see that the aspect ratio is all kinds of messed up. But by adding that one line, we fix the aspect ratio. Now let's go back over here to see what we want. Next thing we want to work on is this title section as well as all the buttons and stuff down here. To do that, we're going to open up our card.body. And inside of our card body, we want to give it a few classes just to do some styling on it. We're going to use Flexbox inside of here and we want to do a flex column. So we're just going to be laying things out using Flexbox and we're going to be making them vertically stacked essentially. Once we've done that, we can work on the title next, which is just card.title. Inside of our title, we have two sections. We have the name here as well as the price, and they're spread out as far as possible from each other. And the best way to do that, again, is going to be with Flexbox. So we can say we want to use Flexbox here, and we're going to justify our content with space between. That's what's going to space them out from each other as far away as possible. I also want to align our items on the baseline so that both of our text have the same bottom point on them. That's just going to make it look a little better. And then finally, I want to give it some margin on the bottom so that our title doesn't touch right up against this add to cart button down here. Now inside of our title, what we need to do is we need to add essentially two spans, so two different sections. The first section is going to be our title, so we can just say name right here. And I'm also going to increase the font size on that. Let's just say class name is FS2. And then we need to have another one, and this is going to be for our price. And this price is going to essentially not have a larger size here. But what we want to do is we want to add some margin on the left hand side. So on the start, we want to add a margin of two. And that's just so if, for example, this title is really long and it gets really close to this text over here, it's not actually going to be touching it. There's going to be some space between the two of them. Also, I'm going to give it a class of text muted so that it's actually a little bit of a grayer color instead of having the same text color. If I say if we go over here, you can see we have book and we have our price showing up right there. Now you will notice they aren't spaced out between each other and that's just because this should say justify content between instead of space between and that's going to fix that problem for us. Now you will notice one problem though is all of our pricing is not formatted. I mean this looks really ugly and we want to format it using like dollar signs, commas, periods, and so on. So we're going to create a utility function inside of that utility folder that's going to do all of the formatting for us. So inside of utilities we're going to create a new file and it's just going to be called currency format or actually we'll call it format currency.ts. So what we can do is export a function called format currency. And this format currency function is just going to take in a number, which has the type of number. And all we're going to do is return a formatted version. And we're going to use the INTL formatters for this. So we're going to say we're going to create a currency formatter, which is equal to a new INTL dot number format. And this number format is going to have undefined as the locale. So it's automatically going to determine how to print out the number based on where you live. So if you live in Spain or France, for example, it may print out these numbers differently than if you live in the US. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to specify we want the currency to be in US dollars and that we want to have the style of this number be a currency number. And it's just going to make sure it has the dollar symbol at the front and that it's going to only be two decimal places at the end. Now, to use this formatter, we can just come in here, say return currency formatter dot format and we pass it in our number that right there is going to format the currency for us. So instead of here, 
we can import that function and we can use it right here. We can say format currency, pass it in our currency, just like that. And if we make sure it's imported at the top of our page, when we save, you can now see we get nice formatting with commas, you know, dollar signs, periods where they should be and all of that fun stuff. Now the next section that we need to work on is going to be either the add to cart button or this kind of like plus minus with remove button that you can see here. Now these are going to determine on if there's anything in the cart already. For example, if there's no books in the cart, show the add to cart button. Otherwise, show this cool thing. So it's somewhere inside of here, we need to determine what the quantity of items we have is. So I'm just going to create a variable called quantity for now. This is just a placeholder variable so we can test out the two different versions of the UI. One where our quantity is zero and one where our quantity is some other number than zero. So we're just going to start it out with zero for now. So right below our title, we're going to create a div and we're going to give this a class name here of MT auto. And that's just so that this is going to essentially fill all of the space available in that flex container that we have right here. We have this flex box container. This is going to fill all the possible space. So we have multiple items next to each other. For example, I expand this. You can see that no matter how tall one item is or the other, they're all going to fill the exact same height, which is exactly what I want. Now let's bring this back down to a more reasonable size. Another thing we're going to need to do to make sure that works is we need to come up to our card and we need to give it a class name here of H100. So this is going to fill the full height, essentially 100% height. Now inside this margin top auto section, that's where we're going to either have our add to cart button or our kind of stylized section up here with the plus and minus buttons. So in order to do this, we first need to just have essentially an if check to see if we are doing this plus or minus version or the add to cart button. And to do that, we're going to use our quantity. So if our quantity is equal to zero, then we know that we want to do the add to cart button. So if our quantity is zero, do an add to cart button. Otherwise, we need to do something else. In our case, we're just going to render out null for now. So let's just put that like this, give it a quick save. And inside of here, we can just do our button. So say button like that. Make sure that we import this button. There we go. And now inside this button, we want to say add to cart. And now if I save, come over here, you can see we have this add to cart button, but it's obviously not styled like we want it to. So let's add some styles. We can say that we want to have our class name, the W100, click save. And now you can see it's filling the full width, which is exactly what we want. Now, next, we need to worry about the plus minus with the remove button section. Now, this section is obviously a lot more involved, but essentially it's just going to be two Flexbox containers. This row right here is going to be its own Flexbox container, and then the whole column is also going to be a Flexbox container. So we're going to come in here with a div, and we're going to give this a class name here of dflex because we want it to be Flexbox. We're going to align our items in the center, and we're going to say flex column. And what that is going to do is it's essentially going to give us a vertical, vertical column right here that has everything aligned in the center, in the middle, just like this. And then we also want to add a specific style on here, and the style is just going to be gap of 0.5 REM just to give us some space between these different items. Now let's close off that div and inside of this div we need to have our other flexbox container which is going to be for this horizontal row. So this next horizontal row is going to have a similar class name of the flex and it's going to be aligning the items in the center and we're also going to justify whoops justify our content in the center just to make everything as center aligned as possible. And also we're going to give it the same gap. So we're going to come in here, copy this gap down and paste it in there. And we're going to close off the div. And for now, I'm just going to put the text like high inside of this one. And I'm going to put the text by inside of this one. So if I come over here and we click or we change our quantity, sorry, to like one. You can now see it says high and below that it says by, which is exactly what we want. Now we just need to change high to be some buttons and by to be our remove button. So this section is pretty straightforward. Actually, we need to create a button. And this button is going to have a minus symbol in it. And we also need another button with a plus symbol in it. And these buttons essentially are just going to have nothing right now. We're going to add some on click event listeners to them, but for now, they're just going to be buttons. Next, we want to have a div. And this div is going to have a class of FS3, just like that. So we can have a larger font. And this is going to contain our quantity. Whoops, quantity, just like that. Close off that div. And actually, what I want to do is I'm going to change this to a span. And then I'm going to wrap that span in a separate div. And inside this other div, let me just close it off here. I'm going to put some other text. So this other text is going to say in cart. So now if we save, you can see if we come over here, it says one in cart and we have a plus and a minus button. So that works exactly like we want. And the reason I put this in or this one inside of here, the quantity inside the span is so I can make the font a little bit larger so it stands out a little bit more. Now, the very next thing we need to do is add another button where this by goes. And we want this to have a variant of danger. So it's that red color. And this is going to say remove. Also, I want to change the size here to small. And now if I save, you can see we have that remove button. 
And if we change our quantity up here to zero, and we save, you can now see it says add to cart. Now this is giving me essentially an error. The reason for that is because we're hard coding our quantity. So it's saying like, hey, your quantity is always zero or your quantity is always one. Why do you have this if check here? But that's going to be changed as soon as we start implementing all of the logic. And speaking of logic, that's the very next thing that I wanna work on. So we're gonna create a separate context here. And this context is gonna be called shopping cart context.tsx on text. There we go. Now inside of here, I want to have two different functions we export. The first one is going to be for getting our context. So we're going to export a custom hook called use shopping cart. Make sure I spell that correctly. And this use shopping cart is just going to return calling use context. And we're going to pass it in our shopping cart context. Now we need to create this shopping cart context. So we can say const shopping cart context is equal to create context, which we can import from React, and we can pass it in essentially an empty object for now. The other function I want to export here is a function for actually implementing the provider portion of this. So this provider is going to give me all the values I need, and it's also going to do all the code for rendering out our shopping cart when we click on this button over here. So we're going to call this shopping cart provider. And the shopping cart provider is just going to take in some children, and we're just going to re-render out those children. And the reason for this is because anytime you use a provider, the provider needs to have objects and children inside of it. So we're just essentially creating a wrapper around our context that has this children object. And then down here, we can return our shopping cart context dot provider. We give it a value, which for now, we're just gonna give it an empty object as our value. And then inside of here, we're gonna render out those children. Super straightforward. And if I save, you can see that that is all working. We just have an error right here because we need to change the props for this. So I'm going to come in here with a type. I'm going to call this shopping cart provider props. And this is going to have one prop, which is children, which is just going to be a React node. And let's make sure we implement that, or I'm sorry, import that. And React node is essentially just like the type that you give to the children property inside of React. And now we can just say that this is going to be our shopping cart provider props. And I like to have all my types at the start of my file. So I'm going to move this type up here. There we go. And now that got rid of all of those errors for this, and we can actually use this shopping cart provider. So if we go into our app, we can wrap our entire app inside of our shopping cart provider, just like this. And if we import this, there we go. Now our entire app has access to all the things inside of our shopping cart provider value inside this context here. And if you're kind of unfamiliar with how context works, this section is gonna be really confusing. So I highly recommend you check out my completely free React Hooks course. It's gonna be linked in the description for you. It'll explain exactly how context works. But moving on from that, we now need to actually give our context a value besides an empty object. Now, the first thing I want to do is think about what do we all need inside of it. So we can create a type for this. We're going to call it shopping cart context. And inside this type, what do we want to do? Well, we need to be able to add things to the cart. We need to be able to increment them, decrement them, and remove them. So that's kind of like the main things we need to do. And we also need to figure out like how many of an item are in our cart as well. So we need different functions for that. For example, we can do one for getting the item quantity. So we can say quantity, just like that. And this will just take in an ID, which is a number. So with the ID of the item we want, and we're going to return a number, which is the number of that item we have in our shopping cart. Now we're going to have a couple other functions. For example, we want to be able to increase our cart quantity, just like that. Again, we're going to be passing in an ID, and this doesn't return anything. We want to have the same exact thing, but for decrease, we're going to decrease this. It's going to take in a ID, and it's going to return nothing. And then finally, we want to do remove from cart, which takes in an ID and returns nothing. So we have four functions, and all four of these functions are all the implementation we need to do this store item. Now, you will crucially notice I don't have an add to cart function inside of here, and that's because adding an item to the cart is the exact same as increasing our cart quantity by one, because going from zero to one is the same thing as adding an item to our cart. So I didn't see the need for adding that in. Now what we can do is we can say that our context is going to be as this type. So what this is saying right here is our shopping cart context contains these values as its type. So now down here you can see it's saying, hey, we're missing all of those things. We need to put increase cart, cart quantity, decrease cart quantity, remove from cart, and so on. We need to create those functions. Now in order to create those functions, we obviously need to have a place to store all of our cart information. And for now, we're just going to do that in a use state, but we're going to move this to our own custom hook for local state storage as well. So we can say const cart items and set cart items is equal to use state 
And this use state here is just going to have an empty array by default. And we're also going to give this a type of cart item array. So let's define that cart item type all the way up here. Type is a cart item. And in our case, a type for cart item is really straightforward. We have an ID and we have a quantity. Whoops, quantity. And both of those are numbers. That's all that our cart contains information on. And we don't need any more information than that because if we have the ID, we can look up all the information for like title and price and so on. And if we have the quantity, we can calculate what the total price is going to be by using the price multiplied by the quantity. So that's all we really need to store. If we store like the name, for example, in here as well, that's gonna be duplicated information. And if for example, our book name here changes in the future, it's not going to line up with the cart item. But if we use IDs, it's gonna make sure if we change the book name in our data, it's going to get corresponded into this cart item as well. So now with that, we essentially have a storage place for our cart items. Now all we need to do is actually create those functions that are going to increment, decrement, and so on those different values. Now the first one I'm gonna create is going to be the get item quantity, because this is pretty easy. It takes in an ID, which is a number, and inside of this function, all I wanna do is take our current cart items. I wanna find the item with the current ID. So we can say item where the item.id is equal to our ID. And then if we have that value, I wanna return our quantity. Otherwise, I wanna return a default value of zero. So with this question mark syntax right here, we're saying if this evaluates to something, then get the quantity on it or return zero if we have nothing. That's all this function does. And we can add that down here into our value. So now we have one of those four functions defined. Next up, let's define our increase cart quantity. It takes in an ID, which is a number. And this function right here is gonna be quite a bit more confusing. First, we just need to call the set cart items. I wanna get our current items, just like that. And this current items is going to be whatever our current list of items is, and we need to modify this list. So if our current items dot find of our item IDs are equal. So if we can find an item inside of our cart, then obviously then that means that we have an item. So what we want to do is we want to check to see if we don't have an item. Because if our item doesn't already exist in the cart, well, we need to add it to our cart. So here what we can do is we can just return all of our current items. We can add in a new item, which has an ID and a quantity here. Quantity of one. So this first scenario that we ran into with this if is essentially saying, hey, you know what? If we don't have this item at all stored anywhere, then what we need to do is we need to add a new item for it. Otherwise, if the item exists, all we need to do is increment the count of that item by one. So instead of our else down here, we can do a different return. And this return is just going to map over all of our current items. So we can say map each one of our items. And for each one of our items, if our item.id is equal to our ID, then that one we need to change. So we can return that item, spread it out, but we're gonna take the quantity and add one to it. So all we're doing here is saying, hey, if we found our item, take the current item, keep everything the same, but increment the quantity by one. Otherwise, we're just gonna return the item as is without any changes at all. So that right there is our increase cart quantity done. Let's add that to our list and slowly and surely these errors are gonna get less and less. Now let's just minimize these both down because the next thing I wanna work on is decrease. And decrease is somewhat similar to increase. The only difference is what I wanna do up here in our find is I wanna to check to see if our quantity is equal to one. Make sure I do this correctly, there we go. So if the quantity of the item that we find is one, we'll then get rid of it. So what we wanna do is we wanna take our current items and I wanna filter them for our item where the ID is not equal to our current ID. And this is just going to return a brand new list of all of our items, and all of them are gonna be exactly the same, but whichever one we pass the ID of, we're gonna remove that from our list of items. And if we pass an ID for an item that doesn't exist, this is still just going to return us the current list. So it doesn't matter if we pass an ID that doesn't exist, or we pass an ID of something that has a quantity of one, both of these scenarios are going to work just fine. Now down here, this second part is gonna be really straightforward. All we need to do is change the plus to a minus, and that now takes care of decrease. Let's minimize that, add it into our list, decrease cart quantity, and now we're down to our final function, which is remove from cart, which takes an ID, which is a number. Now this remove from cart is very straightforward. Essentially, all we're gonna do is just take this line right here. So we can take set cart items, get it our current items, and then all we wanna do is just filter out the items where the ID is not equal to our current item ID. That's all that remove from cart is going to do. 
And if we save, you can now see all of the errors in this file are gone. And we now have all these values for get item quantity, increase, decrease, and remove. So we can use those inside of our actual store item. So we can actually use that context. So what I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to say const get item quantity. And let's just say use shopping cart, I believe is what I call it. There we go. So we want to get our item quantity. We want to get our increase, our decrease, and our remove function. We're going to get all those out of here. And then what I want to do is I get our quantity, which is just get item quantity for our ID. So right here, we now have our quantity being dynamically set, which is perfect. And we have the ability to increase, decrease, and remove our items. So let's just set up our event listeners. So if we scroll down here, we have our button for our add to cart. So inside of our add to cart, I want to add an event listener for on click. And this on click is just going to call the increment function. So let's just say increment, I'm sorry, it's increase, not increment. Increase cart quantity, and we pass it in our ID. I'm gonna do the same thing for a lot of the other sections. So we're just gonna copy this. Our plus button is doing exactly that, so let's just paste it down. Our minus button is going to be decreasing, and our button here for remove is just gonna say remove from cart. So now let's go ahead and test this. We're gonna come over here, we're gonna click add to cart, and you can see it added this. I click plus, it's increasing, minus it's decreasing. If I minus all the way off, it gets rid of it. Click remove, it gets rid of it. So this is doing exactly what we want. Now we just need to make it actually show up in our shopping cart, because right now our shopping cart does nothing and it always says we have three items. So now we're gonna be working on opening and closing this shopping cart right here. Also, we can actually get this quantity section here as well. That's gonna be pretty easy to do. So if we go all the way back here to where we have our nav bar, inside of our nav bar, we need to essentially have some functions for opening our cart, and we need to have a function for actually getting the quantity of the items inside of our cart. So inside of our shopping cart con context, we need to add some functions for that. We're gonna add here an open cart function, which is just an empty function that takes nothing and returns void. We also, while we're at it, probably wanna have a close cart function as well. And then we also want to be able to get our cart, whoops, cart, quantity, there we go. Our cart quantity is just a number. That's just the total number of items in our cart. Let's move that down here. And I also wanna get our cart items, which is just our cart item array. This is all the information we're gonna need. Our cart items are going to be for populating our cart. So up here we can put all the information for our cart and the quantity is gonna be for our actual button right here. Same thing with open and close. So if we scroll down, obviously we don't have those values. So we need to work on getting those values. Let me minimize these functions here. Get them a little closer together. Whoops, there we go. That way they're kind of out of our way. And what I want to do is first, we can just add our cart items in there. That's the easiest one to take care. So we have our cart items done. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to work on our cart quantity. So we can just say quantity, and let's actually just call this cart quantity. This is going to be equal to our cart items dot reduce. For each one of them, I want to take our quantity and our actual item. So this quantity right here is like essentially our total. And I'm just going to return item.quantity plus our quantity. And I'm going to default this to start at zero. So all this is doing is just counting up all the different item quantities for every item in our cart. And it's going to return to us this cart quantity variable, which we can just paste down here. And now all we have left is our open and our close functions that need to be implemented. To do this, we can create a state variable up here. And this state variable is going to be a very simple state variable that's just going to be defaulted to false. It's going to say is open and set is open. And then we're going to have a simple function, open cart, whoops, equals set is open to true. Make sure I spell const correctly. And we're going to have close cart, which is going to set our open to false. And then down here, we can put open cart and close cart. And if we save, hopefully that should get rid of all of our errors because now we have all of our different values that we need to find. So now we can actually move over to our nav bar. At the very top, we can get those values that we want. For example, our open cart function and our cart quantity, we can get those from, I'm sorry, not from, we can get that from the use shopping cart. There we go. So now we can put this open cart function. When we click on our button, we can just say on click is equal to that open cart function. And then down here a little ways, we can put our cart quantity. And actually, I'm going to move this right here. So it actually wraps our entire button because there's no point in having the button, 
be able to open our cart if there's nothing in our cart. So now this cart button doesn't even show up until we add something to it. And now we have that button here. And when I click it, it's calling this open cart function, but this function doesn't do anything yet. So now we need to work on actually styling out how our shopping cart is going to look. So inside of our shopping cart context, what we want to do is we want to render a section for our shopping cart. Just like this. And we're going to create a brand new component for that called shopping cart.tsx. And inside here, we're just going to export a function called shopping cart. And for now, we don't know what it's going to take or what it's going to need, but we can actually style out the HTML of it so we can figure out what we need. We'll come in here, we'll do a quick return, and we're going to use something called off canvas. This is something from Bootstrap, and that essentially is this like slide in effect that you see right here. That's what this off canvas is. And this off canvas inside of it, we need to have an off canvas header. And this off canvas header is just going to say cart, for example. Also, inside of here, we want to give this a close button. And we want to make sure that we also say off canvas dot title, and we'll put our cart text inside of our title. So if we say that you can see we have our header, and then we have our title inside the header and the header has a close button. And we can just set the open property of this to true. And now if we save, and we make sure we import this right here, we should see that we have this open on the right hand side of our page, or at least open on our page somewhere, but it doesn't look like it's rendering on our page at all. The reason for it is this should say show instead of open. Now you can see this is showing up on the left side of our page. To get it to show up on the right hand side of our page, we can say placement is equal to end. And now you can see that that's showing up on the right hand side of our page, just like we want. And if we click outside of it, it should close it. But we don't have an on close event set up to this. So we need to set up an on hide event which in our case is called the cart close. And this cart close function comes from our context. So we can import our context here. So we can say cart close equals use shopping cart, just like that. And now we just refresh this real quick. We click outside of here, it should close. But of course, this is not working. That's because I called this close cart instead of cart close, paste that in here, refresh this. And now when I click on the outside of it or click on the X here, it should close, but it's still not closing. The reason for this is show is always set to true. This should be set to is open. Whoops, is open. And this is open, we can pass into our shopping cart. So we can just say is open, just like that. So this is open will be passed in from here where we just say is open is equal to is open. And then inside of here, we want to make sure we give this a type. So we can say type shopping cart props type, or I'm sorry, it's going to be is open is a Boolean. There we go. Now we refresh. By default, it's not open. If we click this button, it's now open. Click outside of it, it closes. That's great. Also, we should just make sure we give this the shopping cart props. And then the next thing I want to do is style out the section of content that goes inside of our cart, because right here you can see we have our nice little cart item section. So to do that, we're going to be needing a body. So off canvas dot body and inside of the body, we're going to create a stack and a stack is just a really easy way to stack things either vertically or horizontally. And we can give it a nice gap, for example, of three to give us some space between each one of our items. And this comes from bootstrap up here. So inside of this stack, what we want to do is we want to loop through all of our cart items. And our cart items comes here from this. So we can say cart items. That's part of our sharpening cart context. So for each one of these, we're going to loop through them, we're going to get an item. And then for each one of those items, I want to return a component called cart item. We're going to give it a key of our item dot ID. And then we're just going to spread out our entire item outside of that cart. There we go, make sure I close that off. Add that in. And there we go. Now we just need to create this cart item component. So let's come in here, cart item dot TSX export function cart item. And this cart item just takes in one of our items from our cart and our items from our cart have an ID and a quantity. So that's all we need to care about. We can come up here, cart item props, ID number, quantity number, and then here, cart item props, there we go. Now inside of here, what we need to do is we need to actually implement all of our features. So if we look here, you can see we're showing the image, we're saying the actual price, let's add a few more of those to the cart, or I'm sorry, the name right here, we're saying how many we have in the cart, 
and we're saying the price, the total price, as well as a remove button that'll remove it. So just add a couple more of those back to the cart. And if we have multiple, you can see they're showing up just like this. So the first thing we need is obviously that remove function. So we're gonna say remove from cart. That is equal to use shopping cart. Also, we need to get our item itself because right now we have the ID and the quantity, but we don't have like the name, price, and so on. So to get our item, we can get that from our store items and the store items is just our JSON. So we're gonna import store items from dot dot slash data slash, I think it's items, yep, items.json. So what we can do is we can try to find the item that has the ID equal to our ID. And if our item equals null, then we're just gonna return null. Essentially, we don't wanna return anything at all. So if we don't have an item, we can't find one, just return nothing. That means the item doesn't exist. Then the next thing we can do is we can come down here and we can turn information about what we actually want to render. And what we want to render is a horizontal stack. So we can come in here, say stack, and our direction is horizontal. And we want to give it a gap of two. Now inside this gap, we're going to have a bunch of sections for our image. This section right here, which is like a vertical stack, and then the section over here on the far right. So first, let's worry about our image. So we can say our image here. Whoops, make sure that's self-closing. We can give it a source, which is our item.image source, our image URL, and we can give it some style to make sure the image isn't too large. For example, our width is 125 pixels. Height is going to be 75 pixels. And then finally, object fit is going to be cover. There we go. Give that a quick save real quick. And now we can see if we come over to here, we refresh this, hopefully we add some items to our cart. We have some errors showing up. Let's see what this error is. If we inspect real quick, go over to our console, cart item is not defined. And we can see that right here. Obviously we need to import cart item. So now, hopefully, if we just refresh this, add some item to our cart, it's still not working. Oh, I forgot to save the file. That would easily explain it. Now we can add some items. Let's add a couple of these, open this up, and you can see we have the images showing up, which is great. Now adding back into our cart item, I wanna add a few classes to this stack just to make everything line up a little bit better. We're gonna change it to be flex. And we're gonna align our items in the center, just like that, just so everything is going to be center aligned. And then the next thing we're gonna work on, if we come over here, we can kind of see, is we're gonna work on this vertical stack right here. So we're gonna give it a class name of ME auto. That's just going to push everything to the far right hand side, which is exactly what we want. And then we're gonna have another div inside of that that's going to be for organizing our different sections. So this first div right here is for our item name. So we can just say item.name. And then also what we wanna do is we wanna have a span that comes after this. So this span that comes after is going to be a text of muted. So we're gonna say a class name, text muted. And we only want this span to render if we have a quantity above one. So if our quantity is greater than one, then show this span. And inside of here, I wanna have our quantity with an X after it, just like that. Also, I wanna change our font size, be a little bit smaller. So we're gonna say style, font size, and this font size is 0.65 REM. And let's just make sure all of this is showing up correctly. It looks like I'm probably missing right there. Now, if I save, you can see everything's rendering correctly. Come over here, give it a quick refresh, add some items to our cart. Come over here, you can see it says 2X. This should say X2 instead of 2X. But other than that, it looks like it's working exactly as we want it to. So we can move on to the next section, which is rendering out this pricing section down below. And that's going to be in another div that comes after. First of all, I wanna give it that same muted text and I wanna change the style of the font size again to be a little bit smaller. So we'll say 0.75 REM. And then I wanna essentially just format our currency. So we can say format currency of our item price, just so it looks a little bit nicer when we actually render this out. Give that a quick save, refresh over here, add an item to the cart, come over here, you can see it renders out the price. Next, we just need to add the total price as well as this X button on the right. The total price is super straightforward. I'm just gonna copy this format currency. So we're just gonna create a div. And inside that div, we're gonna format the currency of our price times our quantity. Super straightforward. And we might as well just do the remove button while we're at it. So it's coming here with a button. Variant is gonna be outline danger. 
size is going to be small. And on click, we just want to call that remove function. So we can say remove from cart item.id. And this will just say ampersand times. That'll give us that X button. Well, let's make sure we import that. And now if we save and we refresh this, we'll just add a couple items to our cart. Come over here and now you can see everything is showing up. We click the X button and it removes those items from the cart. Now the very last thing we have to implement is our total section. As you can see over here, we have a total, but that's not in one of our cart items. That's all the way back in our shopping cart. Now our total we want to put inside of our stack. So we're gonna create a div for it. We're gonna give it a class name here, which margin start of auto. That's gonna push our total as far to the right as possible. We also want it to have bold font and we want it to have a larger font size. Now inside this div, we just wanna say the text total, and then we obviously want to format our currency. So we're gonna format our currency, and this is gonna take our cart items, and we wanna reduce this down to a single value. So we're gonna take our total and our current cart item, just like this, and inside of here, what I wanna do is I wanna get our item, and that item is going to be coming from our store item, just like we did inside of here. So I can actually just kinda of copy this code I'm just going to paste it down here. So we're going to take in our cart item dot ID, and I'm going to take that import for our store items, and I'm just going to paste it at the top here, just like that. So now we're getting our individual item from our store items. And then what I want to do is try to return the total plus our item dot price times our cart item dot quantity. And our item sometimes will not exist. So in order to take into account when our item doesn't exist, we can just say item price, and by default, we're just gonna set it to zero, just like that. The final thing we need to do is we just need to make it so that we default our initial counting to zero, and that should hopefully solve all the problems that we need. Now, if we come over to our app, let's just add a couple of these, it's gonna come in, maybe we'll add a couple of these, add one of these, we come over to our cart, and now you can see our total is just the accumulation of all three of those different numbers, and if I remove something, you can see our total changes. Now that's almost everything for our shopping cart. The last thing we have left is to make it so that when we refresh our page, all the items in our cart stay there because they currently do not. This is really easy to do. We're gonna create a custom hook called use local storage.ts. And then inside of our shopping cart context, we're just going to use that local storage. So up here, instead of use state, we're gonna use local storage. And this use local storage is going to take in another property and this property is going to be the default value. We can just call it like shopping cart, for example. It doesn't really matter what you call it. And then we can make this hook. So export function use local storage, just like that. And then we can import that into here. There we go. That should fix most of those errors. Now what we need to do with our use local storage hook is we need to make it so that it works with custom generic types as well as these different props. So if we come over to that hook real quick, we of course need to make it a generic. So we're gonna say T right here. That's gonna be our generic type. And we're also gonna say that it's going to have a key, which is a string, and it's gonna have initial value. And the initial value is either going to be a type of T or it's going to be a function that returns this type of T. And this type of T is just whatever we pass here for our use local storage hook. So we said it's an array of cart items. That's all that this right here is saying with our use local storage hook. That's what this T represents. It can be any type you want. We're just saying whatever type it is, this initial value is either going to be that type or a function that returns that type. That's it. Now what we need to do is we need to actually implement our use state logic. So we can come in here and we can say, we're gonna get a value and a set value, which is gonna be equal to use state. And this use state right here is going to be of this generic type T. And what we want to do is we want to use the function version of it because we only ever want to invoke checking our local storage one time because it's kind of a slow operation to do. And we don't want to do this every time our component re-renders. So here we can get our JSON value, which is just local storage dot get item of our key. And then if our JSON value is not equal to null, well, that means that we have value stored in our local storage. So we want to just parse that out. So we're going to just JSON parse our JSON value. And we're going to return that just like that. And that right there is going to get us this value right here that we care about. The next thing we need to do is check what happens if we don't have that. So if we don't have that, then that needs we need to check the type of our initial value. So if our initial value is a type of function, 
Well, then that means that we need to invoke it as a function. So we can return invoking our initial value as a function. Otherwise, we can just return our initial value. Now we will get one TypeScript error here, essentially saying our types don't line up. What we need to do is we need to explicitly tell TypeScript that this initial value is a type of this invocable function that returns our type of T right here. This is just to get around some TypeScript issues because it thinks that possibly this value right here of T could be a function, but we know for a fact it can't be. So that just fixes those issues. Now this just essentially all it does is it gets the value from local storage or it's going to get the initial value that we passed in. That's all that code did. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to set up a use effect that runs every single time our key or our value changes. We just want to store our value back in local storage. So we can do a set item with our key and we can just stringify our value. And then down here we can return value and set value. But if we just do that, it's actually going to give us an error. If we come over here, you can see that these values have both an array of card items and it's going to be a set state. So of course, down here, when we try to use these, it's going to give us an error. To get around this issue, it's super simple. We just need to explicitly tell it that this is going to be an array with T and it's going to be an array, which is just value, I'm sorry, type of set value. And we can even do the same thing here. Where we just say type of value. And that's just saying that the first element in our array is always going to have this type right here. And the second element is always going to be this type. Now, when we go back into here, we hover this. You can see this is always an array of card items. And this one right here is always this like react set state thing. So now with that done, if we add some items to our cart, let's just come in here and we'll add a couple of these, add a couple of those. You can see we have two books, three computers. If I refresh my page, you can see we still have two books and three computers. If I get rid of one of them, refresh, come back, you can now see we still just have those two books. Now, if you enjoyed this project, you're definitely going to love my full React course. It's going to be linked down in the description below. And if you're not ready to pay for a course, you can also check out my free React Hooks course. It's also going to be linked down in the description below. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.